Cuban President Miguel Díaz-Canel has highlighted the importance of four bills passed by the Parliament set to strengthen institutional order in the country. Philadelphia officials issued a citywide curfew on Wednesday after consecutive night of protests following the fatal police shooting of a 27-year-old black man, Walter Wallace Jr. Polls have opened in Bihar, India, for the world's biggest elections since the pandemic erupted. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south, I'm Gladys Quesada. The Cuban parliament met this Wednesday to debate four bills, as well as the social and economic strategy to face the crisis sparked by COVID-19 and the continued impacts of the U.S. economic, commercial and financial blockade. During the final date of his fifth session held this Wednesday, the National Assembly of People's Power was also presented with a report on the closing of the annual state budget. The four bills were analyzed and approved by lawmakers after a discussion in which a variety of questions were addressed and modifications proposed regarding the legal issues in these documents. The session was held in an atypical fashion given the current epidemiological circumstances imposed by the COVID-19 epidemic with only lawmakers from Havana and those representing other territories who reside in the capital physically present at the convention center where the Cuban parliament currently meets while those in the rest of the country's provinces participated via video conference. In this sense, the Cuban president emphasized that the latest legislative exercise was accompanied by the participation of the population and experts. Our people have been able to appreciate by different means the level of debates regarding these norms through the valuable interventions of lawmakers, it should be added that the legislative exercise was accompanied by broad participation of experts from various institutions, including university professors, and by the population, which had access to the bills through different channels. It is an exercise that we must continue and improve. Bolivia's president-elect, Luis Arce, received his official credentials from the Supreme Electoral Tribunal this Wednesday, following his landslide victory in the recent elections. His inauguration ceremony as president of Bolivia will be held on November the 8th. Hoy. Today we present the credentials of President and Vice President to Luis Arce and David Chocowanca because such was the free will and preference of the Bolivian people. With the culmination of the process, we made progress in the delicate reconstruction of public trust in authority and electoral processes. The road is still long because we are carrying the burden of past disrepute and susceptibilities. It requires further examination, which will be faced when the time comes. The result of the election has been recognized by the contestants in a gesture that honors and exalts them, endorsed by the international community that deployed observation missions that measured the election against standards of electoral integrity, accepted by local observation platforms and by society in an act of democratic maturity, regardless of whether the numbers pleased or disappointed them. In Uruguay, public sector workers mobilized this Wednesday to reject the budget cuts promoted by President Luis Lacalle Pou. The Confederation of Civil Service Trade Unions, the Uruguayan Teaching Unions Council and other trade unions called the protest, which saw public employees, including teachers, march from the explanade of the University of the Republic to the legislative to express their opposition to the government's adjustments to salaries, jobs and investments as the budget bill was submitted to Parliament. During the mobilization, public sector workers denounced the privatizations promoted by the government of President Lacalle Pou and demanded employment protection. And Brazilian indigenous peoples are calling on the Supreme Court to annul an, an appeal filed by big business and alliance of President Jair Bolsonaro, with which they could deprive indigenous communities of the right to remain in their ancestral territories. Our correspondent Ignacio Lemus has the details. The main argument for the expropriation of indigenous lands promoted by the agribusiness, mining and real estate lobby can be overturned 
If the plenary of the Supreme Court judges the general repercussions of an appeal regarding the time frame thesis, this is a concept that restricts the right of indigenous people to their lands only in the case of physical occupation on the day of the promulgation of the Constitution in 1988. The indigenous people did not emerge on October 6, 1988. They did not emerge by a spontaneous generation. They were here and they are original peoples. They were here before the formation of the Brazilian state and they continue from a history and territorial occupation. The Supreme Court itself has already guaranteed in a precedent that there is no landless indigenous people. The measure affects the stagnant processes for the demarcation of 310 traditional territories and 537 that are still awaiting the identification process by the Brazilian state. The Sucklum people resisted massacres, epidemics and dams that flooded their farming area. The Supreme Court has already recognized an appeal filed by the Sucklet people against the time frame thesis and the determination may be binding on other peoples. In our history of fighting, our first official contact was on September 22, 1914, so we really have been in contact for 106 years. The time frame thesis was presented during the facto government of Michel Temer and is supported by sectors allied to President Jair Bolsonaro. That thesis of the time frame was reinforced in the current government, but we always had the understanding that since the period of the constitution in 1988, the ruralists, the Brazilian agrarian elite, always fought to overturn the articles of the constitution. The voting scheduled to be held in late October, which could definitely annul the judicial attack against indigenous people, was suspended, and it is expected that before the end of 2020, the indigenous communities hope that the uncertainty of the process in the Supreme Court will end. Ignacio Lemus y Juliana Sif para Telesur. And we'll be right back after this very short break, so don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. In the United States, Philadelphia officials issued a citywide curfew on Wednesday after consecutive nights of protests following the fatal police shooting of a 27-year-old black man, Walter Wallace Jr. The curfew goes into effect at 9 p.m. and lasts until 6 a.m. Various social movements have called the move extreme and sees an attempt to halt the protests against police brutality. This new wave of protests comes after the police shot and killed Walter Wallace Jr. on Monday in Philadelphia. The killing provoked protests in the city, while Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf on Wednesday used ordered the deployment of the state's National Guard. With six days remaining until the U.S. presidential election, more than 4.8 million voters in the state of Washington have already cast their votes. Of the state's 39 counties, 17 saw returns of more than 50 percent. In King County, the state's most populous county, 56.3 percent of voters returned their ballots. The county had forecasted 90 percent turnout before ballots were mailed. According to a Tuesday tally from the U.S. Elections Project, more than 70 percent of Americans have cast their ballots in the U.S. presidential election, more than half the total turnout of the 2016 election, with one week to go until Election Day. And United States citizens living in Mexico also voted primarily at a polling station in Ayijic. Americans living outside the country have been making plans to vote in the presidential election since the summer, but amid the coronavirus pandemic and global mail disruptions, their ballots still may not arrive in time to be counted on November the 3rd. And recent Supreme Court decisions mean that late arrivals in some states will not be counted at all. People who live in Mexico but are from the United States who wish to vote in the national election. Um, it's a complicated process because there are 50 different states and they have many different rules. So we have helped, we believe, close to 800 people. Yes, I already voted. My ballot arrived in the U.S. on October 20th 
And for this election, I'm hoping that we come out with an, an entirely changed power structure in Washington. People in Poland continue in a nationwide strike to protest a top court ruling that bans abortions in cases of congeniality damaged fetuses. Protesters gathered in communities large and small on Wednesday, including a crowd which massed in front of the Polish parliament in Warsaw before marching in front of the headquarters of governing party law and justice. We have two children, beautiful and healthy. I can't imagine giving birth to a sick child and looking like the one on this cross. I cannot imagine it. And I'm fighting for my daughter. She doesn't want to go abroad because she's a patriot just like us. This Wednesday, authorities in Switzerland announced the reimposition of COVID-19 restrictions, including the closure of nightclubs and the mandatory use of face masks in outdoor places, in order to curb an increase in novel coronavirus cases across the country. Public gatherings are limited to 50 people. By public gathering, we are talking about games, cultural events, but also religious events, maths, weddings and funerals. This is a base that cantons can extend depending on the situation they are facing locally. We decided to close nightclubs and dance places across the country. This is a difficult measure to take, but it's necessary knowing the outbreak. We also decided to limit in bars and restaurants the number of people at the same table to four. This does not include families, people who live together. With closing at 11 p.m., and I want to remind you that since October 19th, only seated drinks are allowed. And I also remind you that there is still the obligation to take contact details to ensure contact tracing. These measures will be implemented tomorrow. The plan is clear to slow down the spread of new infections, be able to continue contract tracing, intensify testing, and go throughout the pandemic with the minimum impact possible on the health, economic, and social life by finding the best possible path for our country. And we have more stories coming up after this final short break, so stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. Polls have reopened in Bihar, India, for the world's biggest election since the pandemic erupted. Tens of thousands of people have crowded rallies by rival leaders ahead of Wednesday's first round of voting in the state of 125 million people. The world's biggest democracy has one of its worst outbreaks of the coronavirus with nearly 8 million infections and voters lining up for the first day of a three-phase election for a new legislature in Bihar state were met with masks and temperature checks. In August, the Supreme Court rejected a bid for Bihar political party to postpone the vote, ruling that the virus was not valid reason to do so. We have deployed paramilitary soldiers at every booth polling station for peaceful voting. Apart from this, our zonal magistrates are monitoring 10 to 15 booths, each with full force. Additionally, we are holding flat marches through neighborhoods of poorer sections of society, so no one is able to strong harm anyone and everyone can vote independently. On Wednesday, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa announced that the, he will take a period of self-quarantine after coming into contact with the confirmed coronavirus cases. According to the spokesperson for his office, President Ramaphosa came into contact with a guest at a fundraising dinner of 35 people in the country's largest city, Johannesburg, on last weekend. The president has not shown any symptoms of the virus and will continue to work from home. South Africa is experiencing a sharp increase in COVID-19 cases, having reported over 1,000 new infections and 48 related deaths in the last 24 hours. In the Central African Republic, a high-level United Nations delegation visited the headquarters of the National Elections Authority on Wednesday, ahead of the presidential, legislative and local elections scheduled to begin in December. It is the central piece in the preparation of the electoral process, and as you know, it is a body that has It may voter registration as success. Today, the next steps are just as crucial, including the future publication of the candidates' leads 
and then holding the elections. MINUSCA, the United Nations, and partner organizations, the African Union, the ECHAS, everyone supports the ANES work very concretely. Today we were able to take stock of all that has already been achieved, of the challenges to come, of the need to do everything to ensure the greatest participation in the elections, the need also to continue to explain to everyone, to Central Africans, the decisive work that ANE is doing. Officials of Tanzania's National Electoral Commission announced the beginning of the vote count following the closing of the polls for the general election held this Wednesday. Over 29 million Tanzanians were registered to vote in the 2020 general elections to elect councillors, members of parliament and the president. Meanwhile, the president of the National Electoral Commission dismissed allegations of electoral fraud voiced by the opposition figures, including complaints regarding pre-filed ballots in favor of current president and candidate Joseph Magufuli, and the blocking of opposition delegates at polling stations in the country's largest city, Dar es Salaam. President John Magufuli is running for a second term in office, representing the Chama Chama Bin Dusi, a revolutionary party in power since 1961. The 2020 general elections is sixth to be held in the country since it adopted the multi-party system in 1992. Any results declared by the National Electoral Commission cannot be challenged in court. And Russian President Vladimir Putin announced the allocation of a 127 million U.S. dollars aid package to different regions in the country in order to support efforts to control the coronavirus pandemic. Meanwhile, Russian health authorities confirmed over 16,000 new COVID-19 cases and 346 related fatalities on Wednesday. In aid to the regions, I know that 10 billion rubles has already practically been agreed upon. This needs to be allocated and it needs to be done immediately. The money to help the regions must go toward transporting those in need, purchasing personnel, protective equipment, improving facilities and testing. It must go directly toward fighting the COVID infection and toward these goals and not on any others. German Chancellor Angela Merkel announced a four-week shutdown of restaurants, bars, cinemas and other leisure facilities across the country in order to limit the spread of COVID-19. The decision comes after German health authorities confirmed over 14,000 new COVID-19 cases in the past few days. We can say that our health system can cope with the challenge today, but if the pace of infections continues like this, then we will reach the limits of what the health system can manage within weeks. That is why we need another national effort in the month of November, starting on November 2, a temporary national effort which we schedule for the month of November until its end. After two weeks of coming into force, we will meet again as government and German states and look where we stand, if necessary, adapt measures. All this serves the purpose of being able to arrange better public life in December under coronavirus conditions as we know it today. Meanwhile, thousands of workers in Germany's tourism sector mobilized in the capital, Berlin, on Wednesday to demand support from the government in the midst of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. I have a lot of work that has fallen through since March, as many of us do. This summer, things were a little better, but now the cancellations are starting again with the acceleration of the pandemic. And we, independent artists, are alone. We receive almost no help our survival is really in danger. Luckily, I have savings, but we won't be able to hold on to them for long. A whole cultural landscape is dying in Germany. This culture made by small independent artists. There are still more and more severe restrictions being taken against us. Although we have developed very good hygiene concepts, and it has been proven that there are very few cases of infections that originate from the tourism and event industries, we want to show that we are there, that we are important, that we are dying, and that we need urgent help from politicians. It's important we here to show that we are not responsible for this pandemic, but that we are being used as scapegoats to restore calm in all of this. If we have to close down, then we have to get help from the state, and we are not being helped. 
And we have come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurienglish.net. And also, you can join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram, as well as in your YouTube, our YouTube channel. For Telesur English, I'm Gladys Quesada, and thank you for watching.